What's going on guys, Jose here with Jay's Auto Glass. Today I will be showing you guys how to replace a windshield on a 2014 through 2018 Kia Forte 4-door sedan. I decided to go with the windshield uh, tri-brand, tribal brand, I'm not sure if, if, that's, if I pronounce it correctly, sold by Pilkington. I decided to go with an FW03829GBN, um, again sold by Pilkington. I did also order as a backup the underlay molding USMF3829 in case I did need it. I typically do not use the new underlay molding because they are difficult to put on and make make them look good once they are on the windshield. The double, they are provided with double side, new brand new double sided tape, but it, is, it can be very difficult at times to line up that underlay molding. So it's better off to sometimes leave it and I will show you guys how I do it as well. Well then again, let me show you guys what all tools I, I used as well when removing this car to give you guys a, a brief description besides the tools used to cut out the windshield. Again, these are the tools I use and not typically to uh, at least remove the windshield. And let's get ahead and get started. So right off the bat guys, the first thing you guys want to do is remove the wiper nut covers on the wiper arms. Uh, using the pig's foot is the easiest way. There are little holes on the side of them that you could like pry onto. First, so first thing you want to do is just pry them both off and then put, save them in the place. I typically like to put all the two, all the saw, all the um, was it nuts and plastic pieces onto my pocket, and then you want to loosen up the nuts. I like to use my little, my real walkie three eighths ratchet to take them off quicker. Save me some time from that ratchetness. So then we are going to go ahead and unbolt them both. Um, I find the best way to loosen those wiper arms is by pressing on the joint right there. Um, also, place your tool somewhere where you will, in case you do need it again. I like to just like press it little hammer taps here and there to loosen them off bend them back and you should be able to easily pop them over guys and then uh, other same thing for the other one press it up and then you guys should have easy access sometimes they can they can be a little hard to remove so um just be careful on how just be cautious on how hard you press against them be, be cautious because they are mounted to what is it two little mounts onto the wiper uh, transmission so just be careful guys all right now comes the fun part we're gonna go ahead and start with the cow so go ahead and start taking out the cow there are these uh uh, plastic pieces guys uh, that you do want to be cautious of starting right there you want to be careful once you get to those uh, pins they're really easy pins you just want to push down in the middle of those pockets and then you want to go ahead and just uh, get underneath that clip and pry it upwards push in then pry right under see as you, as you guys can see pull it up those are my these are my, honestly some of the easiest clips you can do be soft on them though because they can break if you push too hard on them push in pry up and there you go you, you just easily remove that one all right guys uh, make sure you look for every single one or you'll end up breaking them again you do not want you want to save as many clips as you possibly can because if not it will it can cause vibration and noise that you don't want to deal with in the future with a, with a uh, customer all right so once all those clips are removed what you're, well, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and pull that cowl off as careful as you possibly can keep in mind the uh break the uh, brake reservoir is kind of in the way so just keep in mind what you want to do is want to leverage from one side to the other uh, also the corner cow pieces can get in the, can be troublesome when pulling it out so be very cautious if you have to remove them feel free but i tend to not remove them so what i do is just leverage from one side and pull the other and it should easily slide out guys so once you get there also go ahead and walk over to the other side and disconnect that washer fluid so you can just go ahead and close that hood you don't need to close the hood all the way just enough to where you can um, cut the glass out without having too much of problems so just keep in mind on that guys place the cow somewhere safe where you won't step on it and it won't get in your way so let's go ahead and start the cutting process and continue from there lower the hood and again guys the easiest way to cut this windshield would honestly be with the string method whatever string machine you will have so and that is the way i'm going to do it but again everyone has a different string machine so we're going to just go ahead and jump right to the uh the cut of the uh old urethane okay Real quick, what I wanted to add, we always prime our glass. I'm not sure about you guys, but I, ever since I used to work for a major company who name I will not say, uh, we do tend to prime the glass. So adding primer to a glass does add more chances of the glass of the of the urethane bonding to the glass so it causes it will reduce a uh, risk of water leak coming from that um, factor. So again, uh, priming the glass, uh, cleaning it, then priming it does reduce the fat the uh the chance of getting a water leak so it's just something to keep in mind in case you guys don't do it and we are still you guys are still activating only the glass i have we have actually uh moved on to priming the glass just to add that extra layer of bonding all right like i had mentioned earlier guys i typically like to leave the old usm molding on the vehicle what i will do is i'll grab a stanley knife and i will trim very close to the urethane end where they almost meet and leave a little bit of the urethane and 
the, uh, the line between the urethane and the uh, USM underlay molding, I will try my best to trim it between them while leaving a little bit of urethane. This will provide that the, uh, when the glass is set, it will look a lot more aligned with the old uh, USM molding. It just looks a whole lot better, guys. Again, also move, make sure if, if uh, go ahead and move the um, A pillar cover out of the way just by pushing it. Luckily, it's an easy just a little push with the wrist. So just barely push on it and it should come off. You don't need to take them off all the way, just loosen it from the main clips because there's no way of taking them, off, taking them off all the way without being able to get in there. So anyways, so again, just trim all the way across the whole windshield just to get that nice little um just to leave that whole usm molding on the vehicle but still enough to where when you decide to cut the urethane you'll still be able to cut the urethane in a good way for your new urethane again old urethane sticks i mean new urethane will stick a whole lot better with old urethane so as you guys can tell there's the whole process there is a little bit of white dust um from the old usm so what we're going to do is vacuum it, it all up in a little bit we are going to clean it so we can make the best bondage with the new urethane again we are just trimming as easily you can be as careful as you can not to scratch the car take your time you see my assistant right there she's vacuuming up that old white dust from the old double side tape and as you guys can tell i am doing my best to just be very cautious and, and like i said leave a layer of pri of uh, old urethane so that it stays stuck to the body that way you run you don't run the risk of it flopping around as you set the new glass or as you cut the old urethane so there we go there's the example again guys we're gonna tr start trimming 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 and right all the way to the bottom. Uh, linear to the uh, USM underlay 3829. Again, if you guys do have the new molding, feel free to put it on, but it, you run such a high risk of not being not setting that uh, USM molding uh, line correctly that it could come out looking ugly. So the old USM molding will actually end up looking a whole lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and move my ratchet out of the way just because I don't like leaving uh, tools on top of, of a customer's car. Uh, luckily that, uh, that, what is it? That scraper's plastic and then made no content with the body. Again, be very cautious, treat, uh, treat customer's car as if they were your own. As you guys can tell, I am now trimming the urethane and I am doing a very easy job. Um, you guys can see where the USM molding was kind of making contact. I am having a little bit of trouble. I should have dug in a little bit more deeper into the, while using the Stanley knife, but overall it was it's still gonna come out looking good once I set the glass. Having a little bit of trouble, they're still cutting it, but well, as the process will go, we're gonna start scraping as much as we possibly can. Again, it's um, it's a way better. Like I said, you'll just get a better look at it. You get a better way of it, of, of that underlay molding once you set that glass. And you, like I said, it's just, it's just more trouble trying to line up that double side tape to the glass. Even if the glass is out, just it just makes it a whole lot better to save. And to be honest, for us, glass text it, it saves us a little bit of money from having to order that uh, new molding. But again, always keep that molding as backup because you can never be too sure. Go ahead and pull that clip out too, guys. When you cut your, uh, when you cut the old windshield out, there will be some clips left in there. Go ahead and pull them out. Reduces the chance of your customer complaining that he can hear uh, a rumbling noise on top of the headliner, and you do not want to have to cut out the glass just to find out that you could have avoided all that if you had only cleaned up after yourself. Always make sure you clean up after yourself, leaving no debris under the headliner because that's, that's again why we started vacuuming too, just to make sure we left no dirt on there. Uh, like, I, like I said again, treat your customer's car as if it was your own. I did miss a spot underneath the VIN number over there. My my, uh, my assistant did catch it in time before we progressed, but uh, we're still just finishing up the, what is it? The scraping process. Again, you cannot be too fast on it. Take your time on it. Kind of scrape toward the edge of it. Little by little, it'll loosen. You guys can see it underneath my two hands. Uh, control your blade to the best of your ability as well, because uh, one, lo one loose grip, and then you'll have the uh, blade fighting to, flying into your customer's car, and you'll end up owing them a brand new paint job. And you can only imagine how bad of uh, explanation or awkward explanation that would be. Uh, on this one, I did forget to take off the A pillar for a second. And I was like, oh, let me move ahead and move that out of the way. It takes a second, guys, to take it off and put it back on. Do not be lazy. Uh, um, just go ahead and get that headache out of the way because it's, uh, normally I don't take them off, but I will loosen them if I have to. Especially when I shoot the new urethane, it's going to make it a lot more easier to shoot it. Plus, the scraping process just makes it a lot more easier because none of that plastic will get in the way. Again, guys, make sure you scrape as much as you possibly can to a nice, what is it, under two millimeters to one millimeter of height. That way, um, you're, not, you're not left with a giant gap. 
again i work uh with, here at jay's all of us we work as a team i, I have an assistant uh, he's actually in training right now but um it's, it's nice to have an extra pair of hands when setting the glass and here at jay's we always set as a team i did end up taking my jacket off right before i decided to shoot the glue and we as you can see guys tell we're about to shoot the glue um on the vehicle right now quick side note guys on on how i like to shoot the uh, urethane the new urethane i typically love to shoot the body i will take any opportunity i can to shoot the body and not shoot the glass i typically do not like shooting the glass because you run a uh, less risk of smearing uh, urethane on the body or just having a water leak uh setting the glass does not guarantee I mean, shooting the glass does not guarantee that you will actually get a proper set what you want to do is actually shoot the body and not shoot the glass in my opinion i think it is way better if you shoot the body and not the glass you get more of an accurate bond and seal because you'll be able to tell whether you made contact or not shooting the glass does not guarantee that you will avoid air leaks especially on the bottom and you run the risk on those corners of not shooting it, of shooting it improperly especially if you're going to be saving that underlay molding shooting the body is way better in this in this circumstance there are very few circumstances where i will shoot the glass but that's more most mostly for quarter glasses or just very odd odd times guys when i'm not trying to do something again shoot the body in my opinion is the way to go shooting the glass very rare times all right let's continue though now my shooting technique is very simple I like to step on the, the bottom of the inside of the car. I always like to start on the bottom, guys. Typically, sometimes you can get a weird blob on your uh, caulking tube. I like to use my Milwaukee battery-powered gun, start at the bottom. I like to make my way all the way to the uh, passenger corner and go up just a little bit on that corner, just a tiny bit, as you guys can see. How about right there? The reason why is now explain to you in a second why I do that, guys. Also, and whenever I shoot the top, I like to reach as far and comfortably as I possibly can while keeping the gun up. Please make sure that V is facing you, guys, or facing straight in the middle. And then the nice thing about saving that underlay molding, it helps you as a guide when do when shooting the glue. Be very cautious on those holes, on those clip holes on the top. You want to do your best to avoid them, guys, at all costs, or you will have a water leak. So make sure you keep your hands straight, take your time. Again, skin time is usually 10 minutes on this urethane. Go slow, as you guys can tell, it took my time to make sure I was going slow. Got uh, fixed my grip a little bit. Here comes the turn, nice slow turn. This is where it gets a little bit troublesome, especially if you did not trim that urethane nice on those sides. You'll get a little bit of a bumpiness. Um, I, I think right there I did get I did get a little bit of a jump so I have to go back and check on it now when I get to the bottom guys this is where it kind of matters you can either connect the seams together or go around the seam toward the outside of the uh, first one to make sure that the water goes around it and you still get that bond so now we're gonna go ahead and jump to the other side as you guys can tell I did get a good little reach around on that urethane or reach far on that urethane <laughs> not what I wanted to say so let's go ahead and finish this up and now I, I, have, I typically have about a foot left there. And now we're going to shoot actually an inch under the one we were on the top one, where we the one before. And we do that because it, it reduces the chance of having a, a, a hole in that seam of actually stabbing it through. I typically like to do that just because it just runs less to give a risk, guys. Again, the less risk of anything is the better. Um, the side, again, the, the underlay USM is helping me keep straight on my glue line. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to end up shooting backwards. You don't have to shoot backwards, but at least finish on that curvature on the pinch wheel, on that curve on the pinch. And then just, I've, I've gotten pretty good at shooting uh, backwards. So we're, we're going to just finish off that last portion of the bottom and get ready to check the glass. Uh, guys, please do check your seams. Look for something around you that can connect those seams together. Place your gun somewhere where it won't make a mess and the tip won't uh, stain the your, your customer's concrete. Again, you don't want to make a mess. You know, treat this home as if it was your own. So then we're going to connect the seams now. And again, first thing you first seam you want to connect is of course the top and then do check the sides but i know for a fact that my mine were okay but i'm still going to go ahead and take a look at them again on this one i did find like a little stick on the ground so i'm just going to use it do not use the stick on the top of the bead on the top of the urethane because you, you run the risk of contaminate contaminating it and you don't want to do that guys again you're just barely gen being gentle and then again just kind of double checking going back to where i messed up a little earlier right there gonna straighten it up a little bit just in case because it did look a little wavy i give you guys this little stick and i'll have to go ahead and just toss it to the side 
um, and then we're gonna do a team set uh, for those who do single man sets um, same process will still work when you do shoot the body uh, I highly recommend shooting the body and even saving the underlay molding will still help will still look very good even when you do the one one man tech or the, the swing arm method or whatever you do now set your tape um, for those who are do, um, setting on the driver's side, please make sure your uh, VIN number lines up properly or you will have a customer complaint and the last thing you want to do is do all that work and have to redo it uh, the next day because you cannot just push out the windshield and reset it. You'll have a lot of cleanup to do. We're going to check my VIN number, make sure it's lined up. The VIN number is the best way to get alignment. And when decking the glass, check how my, my hand movement is, guys. Again, when decking the glass, you want to press against the where the dash meets the black ceramic foot band. That's the best portion to uh, put pressure on it. Putting pressure lower, uh, lower toward the end of the glass can cause the glass to crack. And that's the last thing, again, you want to do is have to redo your job because you decided to put too much pressure. Again, you're just barely decking the glass. Putting the cowl on is pretty easy. Um, don't worry about the washer fluid. What you want to do is angle in one corner again. It's completely the same thing as you did before, one side and the other side. The thing about the Kia, there are two little flimsy um, tabs on that on those side corners that you have to make sure they go in first. As you guys can see, push it in. I'm pointing at it right now. Slide them in first on that corner. Focus on one corner. There you go. Nice and even. Flush with that fender on the side or the pinch weld. Sorry, not the pinch, with the A-pillar. Now you want to do the exact same thing on the passenger side without messing up the pass. I mean the driver's side without messing up the passenger side. So once you have those two little pins in, uh, those two little clip, uh, those two little lips in, you should be able to slide it right in there, nice even. Again, make sure it's lined up properly or you do run the risk of having your customer complain and asking what's going on and it'd be a little bit of an awkward having to fix it right in front of it. Make sure those two little rubber pieces on the end are lined up. Uh, usually they're held on by a little bit of glue adhesive, but um, just putting them back on will be fine. Uh, connector washer fluid, do not forget that, or you have to make a trip back one day in the future because their washer fluid is not working, and it's all because you forgot to put on. Reconnect the uh, washer fluid hose. All right, and then like I said before, go back and just put in all your clips uh the best way to put those clips on guys once you took them off the way is going to be the opposite so while they're outside while you're holding one push the um bottom of it up and then once you have it up um hold it from the top end and then put and slide those clips on into the two holes and once it's pushed into the two holes you want to just pop the top of that little hat down and once it's flush with the clip Again, guys, make sure you are fixed on those on those corner pieces because that is very important. Or the cow will not, or those cow pieces and the clips will not line up properly. All right, and again, we're gonna put on, uh, put on, put those, all, put all those clips back on one by one. We were able to save them all. Um, again, there's no guarantee you'll be able to save every single clip, but it's just good to know that you save the majority. At least save two out. Of, if there's five, at least save two out of the five, one for each corner. Um, again, we're dealing with old plastic sometimes, so it's hard to save. Uh, go ahead and put your wipers on, guys. Occasionally, the shorter wiper blade will go on the passenger side, and the longer one will go on the driver's side. Please do memorize where the wiper blades were before you took them off. Something very important to do, or else there will be you run the risk of uh, the wiper blades actually swinging all the way off the, the glass on the driver's side, and only the driver's side will do that. But at the same time, you don't want the wiper arms to hit each other. Uh, I think we're going to go back, and he's going to hand me the ratchet. My assistant. It's great working with assistant guys again. Working with someone there can always help you keep up with what you're doing. Go ahead and tighten that back up a little bit of a tight. Um, don't, just because you're working with electric tool doesn't mean you can't go. You, you shouldn't go back and do it manually. Like that little tug I did was just to secure it. But you don't want to overdo it either. Either and break the wiper motor because unless you are familiar on how to replace those, it's not going to be fun. And paying for that out of pocket also means you just uh, lost all your profit from this windshield replacement. So now we're going to make, make sure we close the hood. Please make sure you close that hood all the way, guys. You do not want to have your customer drive one day down the freeway and have that windshield flop and hit that great work you just did. Peel the tape off, guys. I do not like leaving a tape on a vehicle more than 30 minutes, guys. Typically, I do not leave tape for my customer to take off in the future. They will not take it off. They will, they will actually leave it, and if they leave it for more than a long enough time, you run the risk of a, leaving adhesive on the car. Put those eight pillars back on, guys. Make sure that it's flush with the windshield. You can actually measure how much spacing you have between the windshield and the headliner. Make sure you have a good little spacing. Uh, keep note on how high on how tall your beat is, so that way you know 
how much space if to make sure that you know you did get a good little see uh, uh what is it a uh, deck put your river mirror back on slide it on a very easy river mirror just slide it on remove it with the torque 15 and you are good to go pretty much the job is done guys very simple job these are one of my favorite vehicles to do very easy spend about 32 minutes with recording uh now it comes the most important part cleaning the cleaning your uh your glass for the presentation part so your customer can see that your work is finished Again, peel the tape off. Do not leave tape for your customer to peel off. That's the last thing you want him to do, him or her to do. Um, well, typically when spraying, depending on how hot it is, I'll only spray about half. It was about 80 degrees today, so I only, used half, I only sprayed about half of the glass because you don't want it to evaporate. It just makes it more of a headache to clean it. There is an art to cleaning glass, guys. Um, you want to do it like i don't know the way i do it's very simple uh, you can choose to do it either way just make sure you get all the all the um, the glass skinner off the glass uh typically spray away is the brand i use great brand i do recommend spray away spray away so um that's honestly way better than one next glass cleaner we're gonna go ahead and jump to the other side and uh, finish up there like i said guys very simple job very easy profit job should take about 45 to 30 minutes to be honest if you are quick and know what you're doing if it's your first time it's gonna take you about an hour to an hour and a half uh, no rush depending on how you cut it out again this is the best method to cut this windshield out was the string method uh, whichever type of uh, string machine you have or whether you want to use a uh, the wire as well but the wire will can't can, can and will be more aggressive tend not try not to leave no fingerprints no tape on the body or anything of the sort also if they have oil stickers or any other type of stickers do ask them if they do want those back guys you do not want to have to drive all the way back especially if they are far away if your napkins fall on the ground try not to reuse them on the car because you don't know if it picked up any little pieces of dirt um, other than that guys very simple job make sure your wipers are tight by giving them a little bit of a, sh of a little shake to make sure they're both moving at the same time but yeah guys that's about our first video ever hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on how i did my windshield replacement on this 2014 through 2018 kia forte four-door sedan uh luckily we did have this windshield have no attachments on the like for example lane departure or rain sensor if i if for some reason yours does have lane departure or uh, rain sensor um, it's gonna be a little bit more different when it comes to disconnecting or removing it from the windshield uh, if it does, if your windshield does have a condensation sensor, just uh, remove the condensation sensor and don't disconnect it, and then just use a little bit of uh, double-sided tape or urethane to glue it back onto the windshield. Again, guys, make sure you guys give a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll be dropping videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on different types of vehicles. Hopefully, we can get some more stuff going that way. Appreciate it, and see you guys later.